What are the chances Matt Cardona shows up in Impact Wrestling? Shane Helms appears to be in negotiations with Impact Wrestling, most likely as a producer. The Rohit Raju X Division title reign debacle continues. Rosemary and Taya Valkyrie have a phenomenal match against Kiera Hogan and Tasha Steeles. Is it time for the Knockouts Tag Team titles to come back? All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Just want to say real quick that in addition to contributing to the Impact Lounge of Shooting Up North, I do have my own YouTube channel as well called the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Just really got it going. Uh, been adding content on there on a regular basis now. Just added two new interviews. One with the UCW Atlantic Canadian Champion, Mia Malik, and an interview that I did some time ago, in the past, about a year ago, I did an interview with the legendary Ricky Morton. So go on over, check it out, the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Please check it out, and please hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to get some more subscribers. Uh, If you like what you hear here on the Impact Lounge from Shooting Up North, I'm certain you're going to like what uh, what you're going to hear on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. So kindly head over there. Check it out. Numerous interviews up there. More on the way. Hit that subscribe button and make me a happy, uh, happy person. Thank you very much. Okay, let's uh, start it here. Let's get started. Matt Cordona. Could we see Matt Cordona in Impact Wrestling? He's a free agent now. Just finished up a short-term contract with AEW. And uh, as you, as we know, well, his, his childhood friend... Brian Myers is currently in Impact Wrestling. They have a podcast together, uh, Matt Cardona and Brian Myers. They have a major wrestling figures podcast, I think it's called. They were a tag team in the WWE, Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins. And Brian Myers now, he's he's moving up uh, uh, the ladder there at Impact Wrestling. I believe it's a two-year deal he has. Matt Cardona, free agents. Brian Myers, close friends of Matt Cardona. They seems like they do everything together. Why not? Why can't we see him in Impact Wrestling? I I wouldn't be surprised if Matt Cardona makes an appearance at Bound for Glory. I don't know if it's going to be a long-term deal. I know Matt Cardona has stated that uh, his his, um, desire to work for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, He said he's looking to take some independent dates right now. But um, could we see him at Bound for Glory? I I don't know if Brian Myers is going to have a match at Bound for Glory. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be against, if he does have a match, it's going to be against Tommy Dreamer. And uh, probably going to be, if it's Tommy Dreamer, it's probably going to be a hardcore match. Um, and could we see Matt Cardona make, make an interference if that match does does take place? Could we see Matt Cardona? I, I definitely think we could. And uh, like I said, I don't know if it's going to be a long-term deal. I wouldn't mind if it's a long-term deal. Uh, but... I, th- I think we're going to see Matt Cardona showing up at Impact Wrestling at some point. Uh, whether it's Bound for Glory or whether it's after Bound for Glory, I think he's going to be there and align himself with Brian Myers uh, for a short run. And who knows, maybe a long run. But if they reform the tag team, if they if, if Brian Myers and Matt Cardona reform the tag, their tag team, they would be instant contenders for the Impact Wrestling Tag Team titles. They would be just another tag team uh, that that's added to to the great bunch of tag teams that they have right now. Hey, I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. I, w- I would love to see that. I would love to see that. And um, like I said, it's it's a possibility. It's a possibility that it could happen. Lord knows that Impact Wrestling has the money to bring to bring uh, Matt Cordona into Impact Wrestling. So money's not an issue there. And plus, how much money is he going to command? Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's something to think about. Something to think about. He's and I'm surprised he was on a short term deal. I, I actually I think uh, well I really shouldn't be surprised. I think uh, it was planned that way. I don't think he wanted to be tied down to a a promotion. 
for um for too long because like i said he does have the, the desire to work for new japan pro wrestling so i think he wanted to keep that open so again if if he does appear in impact wrestling while he's waiting for something to happen with uh with new japan pro wrestling it's most likely going to be a short-term deal or well you think about the good brothers actually they have a two-year deal and they're allowed to to work in new japan pro wrestling Maybe that's gonna be a maybe that's gonna be the norm now. Maybe if a wrestler wants to work in New Japan Pro Wrestling or 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 another promotion outside the United States, they'll be given permission by Impact Wrestling. Hence, Matt Cardona wants to sign a two-year deal with Impact Wrestling, and uh, he's free to work for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm sure something, uh, and and he wants to be free to to work for for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm sure something can be worked out there, uh, as it was worked in, worked out for the Good Brothers. I don't know, maybe AEW didn't want to work out such a deal with him. They didn't want him to work for New Japan. I don't know. I don't know the, the, the contents of that deal. Uh, but nonetheless, Matt Cardona, free agent, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see him then later in Impact Wrestling. So, Rohit Raju. Rohit Raju. Let's talk about Rohit Raju's title reign uh, for a while. For a bit, I should say. I, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan, and I've made my uh, my opinion. I've voiced my opinion on this on past shows. I don't like the way they're handling Rohit Raju. Rohit Raju, and I can say this over and over again until I'm blue in the face. Rohit Raju is a fantastic talent. Talent, Hakeem Zayn. He's Hakeem Zayn on the Indies. An absolutely tremendous, tremendous talent. I just you, you can't you can't describe it any better than that. He's a tremendous talent, Rohit Raju slash Hakeem Zayn. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. He's had some tremendous matches on the indie scene, and when he got the the Impact Wrestling uh, X Division Championship, I thought, okay, now they're gonna start taking him seriously, and we're gonna see some we're gonna see some big wins here by Rohit Raju because he's absolutely deserving of holding the X Division Championship and he's absolutely deserving to win a couple of matches but you know they're treating his X Division title reign in my opinion as a joke as a joke he's had one real successful title defense and it was against Crazy Steve it wasn't on Impact Wrestling it was on Explosion so I don't know how many people have saw it so he has the one successful title, one real successful title. He's, he also defeated Trey Miguel. It was after Trey Miguel won a hard-fought match against uh, TJP. Rahit Raju snuck in there and got a quick uh, three count. So he snuck that one. So it wasn't a real match. But one real title defense against, like I said, Crazy Steve on Explosion, which was just a travesty to have that match on Explosion, in my opinion. And what happened on the last episode of, of Impact Wrestling? Well, actually, let's go to Victory. Let's start with Victory Road. Victory Road. He has the the defeat Rohit open challenge. So it's an open challenge, and the open challenge is answered by Willie Mack, and we know what happened there. Rohit Raju decided, oh, I can't beat Willie Mack, so he took the ten count, lost the match to Willie Mack, but he didn't lose the title because it was a count out, and and then the next night, the next the the next show, the Impact Wrestling show, is next. Uh, the next um, Defeat Rohit Open Challenge. Willie Mack came out to answer it again. And I'm like, oh, they're just doing a repeat of, of Victory Road. But I'm thinking, okay, he, at least this time he's going to get a victory over Willie Mack. But he refused the match. And they, he asked for another um, a challenger. And Jordan Grace comes out. Jordan Grace comes out and pins him in three seconds. Pins the X Division champion Rohit Raju in three seconds. I thought that was an absolute travesty. Not that Jordan Grace is a woman, okay? Because I, I have no issue with, with inter, intergender wrestling. Not that, that she's a woman, but just the way that they're treating Rohit Raju as the exhibition champion. And, you know, I got to say, you know, not taking away from the talent of Rohit Raju, he was given a storyline to run with, and he's running with it. He's doing a, he's doing a, he's doing a good job being the... The, the sneaky the, the sneaky uh, title holder who sneaks out victory who just barely escapes with his title by by um by just I guess being downright sneaky okay he's the sneaky X division champion but I just I just don't like the way it's booked here's here's what they should have done this is my opinion now they like a month and a half ago 
they advertise three new exciting young talents coming to Explosion. We haven't seen that yet. Actually, it's been announced um, that on the next Explosion, which will be released next week, uh, next week Benjamin Carter will be um, facing um, Chris Saban. Sorry, Chris Saban. So Benjamin Carter will be. Uh, will be facing Chris Amos. So that's that's the first of the, the young talent that they were advertising a month and a half ago. So it took a month and a half to, to get one of them on. So ben, ben, Benjamin Carter against um, Chris Saban on Explosion next week. I look forward to that match. But here's what they should have done with Rohit Raju, in my opinion. My opinion. He, he should have did the open challenge. And I think these three young talents who should be showcased on Impact Wrestling to show that Impact Wrestling, you know, is looking actively looking for new talent, not th- throw them in onto Explosion where hardly anybody watches. Um, I think these three guys, uh, Trey Lamar, Lee Moriarty, and Benjamin Carter, all should have, week after week, answered that open challenge. And then Jackson Stone comes out in the fourth week and answers that open challenge as well. That would have been a great way to introduce the new talent, and it would have been a great way to give Rohit Rajut, Rohit Raju, Rajut, Rohit Raju, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm getting a little carried away, Rohit Raju, it would have been, a, it would have been a great way to give him a string of victories on Impact Wrestling, but instead they have, they have Jordan Grace come out and pin him in three seconds and made him look like a complete schmuck, but of course, you know, he, she didn't win the X Division title because you know, sneaky Rohit Raju got out of it by saying it wasn't a title match, you know. And and BQ brought up a terrific point, yeah, a terrific point that this was the first open challenge that I've ever seen, that I've ever seen, where the person issuing the open challenge did not win one match of that open challenge. They lost. Both matches, he lost the match. He lost the match to to um, Willie Mack, and he lost the, the match to in three seconds to Jordan Grace. So and it's just they're treating him, you know. And like I, I love Rohit Raju, I love Hakeem Zane, and the last thing I want to do is get him upset. But my opinion is they're not treating him as as the talent that he is. He's not being treated as the tremendous talent that he is and that he can be for impact wrestling and and that's that's my opinion that's my opinion i really think he should have been on the he should have had like three or four title defenses already on uh, well at, at, at least two or three title defenses already a successful title defenses already um, for uh, on Impact Wrestling, and, and he should have defeated. I thought he was gonna. I was thinking when he was in the match at Victory Road against Willie Mack, which was a great match. I was like, oh, this is gonna be a big win for uh, for Rohit Raju, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. So I don't. It just. I don't know. And and now we got the the match at uh, Bound for Glory where Rohit Raju is gonna defend the title against uh, Trey um, Trey Miguel. TJP, Chris Bay, um, who else is in that match? Um, oh, Jordan Grace. So I might be missing one, but he's got to defend the title uh, in that match. So it's going to be like a um, five or six people in that match, and I, I seriously doubt that Rohit Raju is going to come out as out of that match as the exhibition champion. I have a feeling Jordan Grace is going to win the title. I have a feeling Jordan Grace is going to be the next X Division champion, uh, but we'll see what happens. But nonetheless, I I really wish that um, I you know what you know what if if he does lose I shouldn't say of when because he's going to lose the title when he loses the title at Bound for Glory, I would like for him just to just do this storyline. Just say you know what I'm tired of Rohit Raju. The Desi Hit Squad they're gone. We're not going to see them anymore. So. Drop the Desi Hitman, drop Rohit Raju, become Hakeem Zayn, and be Hakeem Zayn in Impact Wrestling, like we see in the Indies. And that would be that would be uh, just absolutely fantastic. If he just says enough of this Rohit Raju stuff, I mean, when he's on the Indies, he's not Rohit Raju. When he's in the Indies, he's he's Hakeem Zayn. He's Hakeem Zayn in the Indies, and and he's damn good. Like I, I've, I'll say it as many times as I want. Right, I was many times, man. And he's damn good on the indies. He's fantastic. He is fantastic. They should even bring his partner Karam in. That they make a fantastic team on the indie scene. I would love to see Hakeem Zayn and Karam in Impact Wrestling. 
That would that would be fantastic. That's what they should do. They should drop this whole Desi Hit Squad, Desi Hitman gimmick. Drop the name Rohit Raju. He just come out and say that he's he no longer he's he's not Rohit Raju. He's Akeem Zane, and uh, bring Karam in, and it would be I, I I think it would be absolutely fantastic. But we'll see. I uh, that that's what I would do. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not Scott Demore. I'm not uh, I'm not Don Callis, and uh, it's it's their decision. But um, that that's my thoughts. That those are my thoughts on uh, on the whole uh, Rohit Raju exhibition title reign. Okay, so let's move on. Shane Helms. Shane Helms. Let's talk about Shane Helms briefly. He is in negotiations apparently with Impact Wrestling. I don't think as a wrestler. I think as a uh, producer. Uh, there was a um, tweet put out by Tommy Dreamer saying, "Stand back." Uh, did I step in the middle of some impactful negotiations? And Tommy Dreamer was standing in the middle of Scott Demore and Shane Helms. And uh, Scott Demore chimed in, "Why is Shane Helms in a suit? Why am I in a Why am I in a luchador outfit? And why is Tommy Dreamer in the middle of everything?" Stay tuned to find out. So I think they are negotiating with Shane Hel- Shane Helms to be a, a producer or a writer or some backstage backstage talent. Um, maybe we'll see him in the ring once or twice, but uh, Shane Helms looks like he's on his way in some sort of role with Impact Wrestling. All right, let's, um, let's move on. One thing that kind of bugged me, one thing that kind of bugged me, and uh, I don't want people to think that, oh, it's just a mistake, oh, you're whining, blah, blah, blah. But uh, Impact Wrestling, yesterday, uh, this is, well, I'm recording this on Saturday, so on Friday, they put out a, um, a Facebook post stating that, that um, Impact uh, Bound for Glory is going to be now in multiple lang- languages on fight. And they put up an image, you know, Bound for Glory. But the only problem with that image is Eddie Edwards is wearing the Impact Wrestling Heavyweight Championship and Eric Young is over to to the right without the title. So that's a, that's a pretty crucial error you're making there, right? That's a pretty crucial error. And a lot of people brought it up. They said, why, why is Eddie Edwards out of the title? You know, and I, I sent the image to BQ and it's like, oh my God, they got to do better than that, man. And this was this was Impact Wrestling social media team on Facebook. They have to, they have to be more careful they have to be more careful just little things like that 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 looks like it's they're amateurs you know eddie edwards not the champion of course anymore eric young is and to put that image up on on friday october 9th like a few like two weeks away from battle for glory to, to give the impression that eddie edwards is the impact wrestling heavyweight champion it's just it's it's just like amateur hour, man. Come on, they gotta do better than that. They gotta do better, you know. And because all it does is, you know, people jump on and start making fun of them. And and in this case, rightfully so, rightfully so. They they gotta. And then I I went to fight. I went to the fight um, app to see that maybe uh you know I know fight um uh the fight app you know they put up you know you could purchase Mount of Glory you know, weeks in advance. So I thought well maybe maybe they started uh. Maybe they, they had made it available to purchase while Eddie Edwards was still the champion. So I went on fight to see the image that they have up there for Bound for Glory. But no, they, they have the image. They have the image, you know, of Eric Young holding the title and, and Eddie Edwards over to the right. So I know it was um, Impact Wrestling um, Fight TV post. Uh, I thought maybe they might have pulled the image from Fight TV because it did say fight at the top. But no, the image on fight... The image on fight has uh, has uh, Eric Young holding the title, so they they gotta be a little they gotta be a little better than that. They need to they need to do a little more. Um, they need to proofread stuff and proof check and make sure everything is good to go before they post it because, like I said, it makes them look like complete amateurs. Okay, all right, Rosemary and Taya Valkyrie against Kira Hogan. And Tasha Steeles on the last episode of Impact Wrestling was absolutely fantastic. I absolutely loved that match. It was just fantastic. Probably the best match Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles as a team has had since they formed their team. Just, just, just fantastic. Just fantastic. This, this, 
but by watching this makes me feel like it's time it's time to bring back the knockout tag team championship and they have enough teams they have enough teams right now and they could even put one or two other teams together but it's time bring back the knockouts tag team championship and i would want kara hogan and tasha Steeles to be the first holders of the knockouts tag team championship well not the first holders but the first holders you know after reintroducing the knockouts tag team champions ta- championship i would want them to be the first uh, team to hold it they are just a dynamite tag team just a dynamite tag team. They work so well together, Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles. And I know in a past podcast, I said I would love to see Kara Hogan get a shot at the uh, the knockouts title. And she's, she's deserving. But if they're not going to do that, put the titles, the tag team titles on Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles. Just, it was just a tremendous match. You know, and they're so talented. They're so talented. And they work so well together. I, I mean, I don't think it's coming back for Bound for Glory. I'm not even sure if it's coming back at all, but I would I would bring it back and, you know, have a tournament. Um, they could even have a, a tournament and just put it on uh, Impact Plus app and uh, a special tournament just for the Impact Plus. Crown a new knockouts, uh, new knockout tag team champions. And I would definitely, without a doubt, if I was Scott Demore, Don Callis, I would put the belts on Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles. Just a tremendous tag team. Tremendous, tremendous tag team. All right, all right. So before I wrap this up, I want to say the new thing now that I've been seeing on by uh, by trolls, trolls on, on social media is uh, they're comparing now Brian Myers because Brian Myers has, has long hair and a beard. And uh, they're now saying that uh, he's he's an edge ripoff. So that's the latest thing, right? It's the latest, it's the latest ripoff, latest ripoff in Impact Wrestling uh, of the WWE is Brian Myers is now Edge. Yeah, they he he posted an they posted an interview of Brian Myers after uh, his match with Tommy Dreamer or after he destroyed Tommy Dreamer, and multiple people saying, "Oh, look, it's Edge! I didn't know Edge signed with uh, Impact Wrestling. When did Edge get there? You know, it's Edge wannabe." Look, look, just because Brian Myers has long hair and a beard doesn't mean he's Edge. You know, I mean. Edge is not the first person in the history of professional wrestling to have long hair and a beard. Okay, they don't even look like each other. It's just stupid. I mean, these Impact Wrestling trolls will just reach for anything, just anything. You know, they'll they'll cling to anything. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. Yeah, Brian Myers is 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 uh, Edge wannabe now. Okay, when when when. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just dumb. It's just dumb. Anyway, I, I, I actually, I even think he might have even worked with Edge at some point in the WWE. I, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's, it's he, Brian Myers is, is not an Edge wannabe, and, and that's where I, uh, that's where I'll put an end to it. He's Brian Myers is not an Edge wannabe. Case closed. And on that note, I will say thank you very much for listening to me. This is Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.